On the show today, we'll take a look at a significant partnership that could deepen the visibility of Nigeria's financial market. As always, you can join the conversation with the hashtag Beyond Markets, and you can follow my Twitter handle too, at Esther O. Awuni. Now, a strategic collaboration between Thomson Reuters and FMDQ O2C Securities Exchange aims to deepen capacity to drive liquidity of the Nigerian market and improve its visibility to international investors. Candice Dot, Head of Market Development at, for Africa at Thomson Reuters, and Tumi Shekoni, ex Associate Executive Director for Capital Markets at FMDQ O2C Securities Exchange, joins me to discuss the details of this collaboration. Thank you so much, ladies. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on the Thank show today. So before, I mean, I know it's an important, very important strategic partnerships. We'll get to that in a moment. But I wanted to just start by reflecting on the journey of our financial markets here in Nigeria. I mean, as a young journalist, I remember how it was reporting the markets then. There was a lot of talk about a lack of depth, lack of liquidity, lack of confidence, all the key main parameters that you would judge a market by, either emerging or frontier or global, we scored very low on those parameters. But now, several years later, it's a different story. To me, you want to just reflect on that, how, where, we are, where we're coming from and where we are today. OK, yeah, thank you, Esther. Um, so you talk about yourself being like a young journalist. Um, FMDQ, I'll probably say in those terms, also is a young <laughs> institution. So FMDQ um, is just over four and a half years old. And like you said, the markets had a lot of let me just say, issues at the time. And part of why FMDQ was birthed really was to address some of those issues, at least as much as, much as it could, in collaboration with the stakeholders of the market. So again, FMDQ, um, November 2013, was launched onto the financial markets landscape. And one of the first things that, in fact, the very first thing that was done when FMDQ was launched was to bring transparency into the financial markets that it you know, that, that was under its purview. So mm -hmm. that's the fixed income markets, the currency markets, and even the derivatives. So FMDQ inherited an OTC market, an interbank market. So the, there was a market that existed where the banks trade, traded amongst themselves. But in terms of unknowing what was going on in that market, we didn't have that. There was stark opacity in the market. So FMDQ being established, you know, the first things we did was provide so like sort of price transparency mm -hmm. on the fixed income securities that were being traded, everything that was, you know, all the bonds, the treasury bills, the corporate bonds, everything that was in, in the market space, also around the FX space. So that's FMDQ birthed in 2013. And again, you talked about lack of depth, you know, so different initiatives that you know, FMDQ has tried to champion to improve liquidity in the market, um, improve not just, I mean, when you look at maybe some of the key issues that would say our markets you know, are plagued with is maybe lack of um, depth in, the, in capacity to start with. And obviously, if you do not have that capacity, there's so much you mm -hmm. can do. So that's one of the major things that we sort of we've looked at over the years and will continue to look at even into the future. So price discovery, transparency, knowing where market is, you know, so giving that information out to, to the, the markets. And I think from the very beginning when FMDQ started, Thomson Reuters was in the picture. Again, because they were, you know, we, we, they, we are pretty much partners in technology and technology space. Thomson Reuters provides the FX, um, the, the, the systems for the FX. Again, with that, we're also able to provide price, you know, transparency, you know, price discovery, okay. what is going on in, in that market. So from the tr transparency, building liquidity, trying to improve liquidity. So we have the banks who are the major liquidity providers. Again, I, I can go on and on. So I'm just going yeah, to... I know, I know you absolutely can. Well, <laughs> I like, there's so much. So maybe... <laughs> Candice, sure. let's hear your perspective. Well. I, I like the way that you started with saying both, both uh, from a young <laughs> perspective, and I think yeah. that's particularly poignant at this particular point in time in an economy where we are looking at youth um, and, and, and actually managing how we evolve from young mm -hmm. societies and financial inclusion and, and, and the likes. But I'd like to refer to Thomson Reuters as maybe an elder in this situation. And, and you have a hundred years. Ex yes. Exactly. <laughs> so we have been doing certain things in the financial market space in terms of being a leading provider of financial information for well over a hundred years. And I think from early on, having been a leader in the financial technology space as well, really setting the boundaries for how markets disseminate pricing information. 
And I think that's what's been so fascinating. My journey has been one where I spent 10 years overseas. I came back just over five years ago to uh, look after the African markets. And my role at Thomson Reuters is market development. So I've been watching and paying very close attention to African market development. Um, but very specifically, with it contained within a Nigeria perspective, understanding that we have been working with various industry bodies for a number of years and also really trying to be a precursor to helping disseminate price transparency. So as it pertains to FX, I think we've been doing that for as long as the FX mm -hmm. market has probably been in existence. Um, but obviously, naturally, technology helps one evolve, technologically advance with uh, market participants and also make sure that we are world-class and helping support world-class markets, both from a narrating the risk of doing business in those markets, but also making sure that globally markets understand what's happening on the ground and ensuring that that information is, is fairly and applicably uh, made available. Absolutely, you're absolutely correct. To me, what about some of those, I mean, for the journey, some of those, should I use the word frustrations as it were, bottlenecks, hurdles that we had to overcome to get to where we are today. But I know there's so many, so many of them. Perhaps you could speak to uh, perhaps one or two of the most frustrating or the most challenging that perhaps at that time seemed insurmountable. But today you look back and you're like, wow. Okay. So challenging, yes, absolutely. And I think maybe one of the major things, the first thing I would say is change. So, you know, when people are used to things happening. You know, if it's not broke, don't fix it, you know. Even though it actually was broke, but we're getting by. So coming, you know, having an institution like FMDQ come into the market space and essentially we were bringing an exchange flavor over an OTC market and over the counter markets where, you know, it's bilateral trading and, you know, the traders, counterparties do what mm -hmm. it is they want to do. However, there was the recognition that we couldn't go on to that next level. We couldn't become world class, you know, as Candice was talking about. We couldn't become competitive globally if we did not move from where we were to where we, where we needed to be. So obviously you have this, you know, like FMDQ bringing about change. You know, change in terms of we have market rules. And not, it's not just having the rules, but having an institution that enforces those rules. So obviously there would be some pushback in that. And you, sorry, sorry, but would you say we're just more about the rules and having to keep everybody in line and everybody adhering to the rules of engagement of the game? Or that on one hand, also knowing that there was also that yearning for that we, we need more, we know that where we are is not sufficient and that we don't know what it is, but we know that something else has to be added to what we're doing. <laughs> and, and yes, it, it is that because we know we need more. But when you're given that more, you're like, okay, we didn't expect this. You know, so, okay. it's, so you know, there's, there's, there's one thing for, we're trying to get to point Z. You know, we think it's just about just flying there and getting there. But, we, but when we now start experiencing the B and the C and the D, we're like, okay, it's probably more, difficult than we thought, but we still want to get a point Z. And, and I think that is what has still helped us overcome those challenges. And when I say us, not just FMDQ, the entire market, because in everything we do, we work with the market. We work with stakeholders. So yes, you bring in rules. We know we need rules, but then when they're being enforced, when you actually have to abide by them, it's, it might be a little difficult or you're thinking, okay, fine. Yes, maybe I did this this time. Can't you just sort of forgive and let and <laughs> let live? You know, I, know. I mean, human nature just, always yeah. kicks in. But it was not <laughs> nothing major that would have broken the market. But just basically knowing that you had someone to oversee and say, no, no, you can't do it this way. But what happens? And what the good thing about it is, you introduce this change. There might be some pushback, but very quickly when that change is implemented, everyone sees the benefit and we're able to move forward. And I guess that is why we are where we are today. Okay, Candice, for you four, I mean, working with the regulators also, I mean, at, perhaps at, at some point, they perhaps also had a good idea because many of them obviously traveled to other markets and saw the level of development and saw how technology was helping make things in the processes a lot easier and faster. But uh, coming back home, they didn't have that infrastructure or that structure. But of course, here comes Reuters wanting to help. What was it like working with the regulators to help just shape things up? So I think, Front and foremost has been communication and making sure that not only are we applying our knowledge from a global perspective, but being able to apply what we do from a product and client and stakeholder engagement perspective in other markets and sharing that information. So I think a big part of our, um, our engagement with FMDQ has been best practice sharing. Um, and making sure that together within the guidelines of rules and structure, 
um, Thomson Reuters is able to not only apply technology to the solutions, but also apply education. Okay. The market is incredibly um, hungry for depth and for deepening. And I think to do that involves uh, a certain degree of evolution and time but also a lot of uh, working with all the different stakeholders. So Tumi's already talked about stakeholders, but I think specifically from my experience, a large majority of the time that we spent is with individual banks and counterparties okay. and actually working through not just taking what is theoretically structural rules and, play, and projects and programs in place, but actually mm -hmm. turning them into how does one actually physically trade? What are the steps and the buttons and the processes that, that, that you need mm -hmm. to follow? How do I extract trade, extract trade data? into a back office or a treasury management system. And all of that involves engaging stakeholders within the organizations that we represent. And I think that's the key is working with the regulators mm -hmm. and working with the technology that's available, but making sure that all the different participants are able to use it properly. Okay, we have just about one minute before going break. Would you like to add to that? We'll come back, we'll talk about, I mean, this strategic partnership. So, so um, can I just talk about working with the regulators mm -hmm. and she sort of looks at we, uh, we, we are a self-regulatory organization, so, and we regulate our members, but a very large part of what we do in FMDQ is market development, again, because that's probably one of the major reasons FMDQ was, was birthed. So, so you would say that that is that's essentially your mandate? To yes, help develop. yes, to help, exactly, develop the, the, the markets, and that would include some self-regulatory sort of function. Kind oh. of, yes. Okay, well. so hold that thought. We'll take a quick break. It's been a, an absolute pleasure talking to you so far. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back to pick up from where we left off. I've been speaking to Candice Dart, Head of Market Development for Africa at Thomson Reuters. And of course, Tumi Shikone is Associate Executive Director for Capital Markets at FMDQ OTC Securities Exchange. We'll continue our discussion right after the break to join us again. We're continuing our focus on the collaboration between Thomson Reuters and FMDQ O2C Securities Exchange. And still with me in the studio are Candice Dart, Head of Market Development for Africa at Thomson Reuters, and Tumi Shikoni, Associate Executive Director for Capital Markets at the FMDQ O2C Securities Exchange. Ladies, thank you so much for your time so far. So let's get right into the nitty gritty, the strategic partnership that we've talked so much about. Tumi, let me start with you. What exactly does it entail? So it's very simple, but I think hugely impactful. So it's, it's about collaborating with a partner, okay, making our partnership, if you will, official. So, and I had said earlier how Thompson Reuters had, has been there from the beginning, you know, even when FMDQ was, was birthed. So this is sort of formalizing the partnership and saying, let us deliberately see how we can work together to help develop the Nigerian markets. So that, that's... Okay, so Candice, sure. what, in terms of specific steps that will be taken, maybe uh, deliverables or expectations, if you will, what should we look forward to? So I think it's a continuity from a number of engagements that we've been having with FMDQ for quite some time, I would say from birth. Um, and I think for me, a lot of it involves how we actually engage with the market. So both from what I mentioned earlier, engaging with stakeholders and regulators. So the Central Bank of Nigeria is a key um, participant in the regulation of the markets and how that is seen from an external perspective um, is very important. So we help with that globalness, taking Nigeria to the rest of the world and bringing the rest of the world to Nigeria, I think is something that is very close to my heart and very close to what we do for all other African markets that we represent. I think for me, this is a key part of a journey that we have been on in terms of sharing and collaboration, but strategically now, starting to actually look at projects and initiatives that are being done in various markets. FNDQ hosts an annual conference and, and probably do a number of other stakeholder engagements in the market throughout the year. And, and we have probably been doing the same thing as well. So you end up realizing that if your message is the same and you're okay. actually delivering a message to the same stakeholders, going together is probably the, the more advisable um, route. And ensuring that we're communicating collectively. So sharing that knowledge, we've traveled to different geographies together. So FMDQ and a number of the team members have represented us at our annual conferences oh. and events all over the world, um, London, Cape Town, etc. And um, we've also got an innovation lab in Cape Town, which is one of uh, the, the seventh in the world for Thomson Reuters that's based. We only have one on the African continent, and I've spent some time with the FMDQ team in that facility as well. Uh, to me, on, I mean, on some of those trips, I'm not sure if, if you've been on one of such trips, 
Well, maybe not. <laughs> well, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't been to <laughs> the then, innovation well, hub yet. Know, <laughs> all the initiatives, all the efforts, especially I mean, in collaboration with Thompson Reuters to you know, deepen the market, mm -hmm. create more liquidity, one of the reasons will be to showcase the opportunities in our markets to foreign investors. Yes. And I'm thinking to myself, those foreign investors, when they come and they see the market and they see what's available, they look at the level of confidence, le level of debt, how easy it is to repatriate funds, et cetera. What is it that they're th thinking now? And how, how would, you, would you say is, is, it's different from how they thought about our markets a couple of years ago? So transparency. And I think, I think what, what we have found about the internationals, you know, is just transparency, because every, everyone wants the right level of information to be able to make decisions, right? So if you're going to invest in something, you need to have all the information that you need to be able to go into that. So I think transparency has played a huge part. And again, even with, with Thomson Reuters, I, I spoke about our markets now sort of being more open, you know, being, you know, providing more information and that information is being disseminated through Thomson Reuters to some of these global participants. So what we have found in discussions with some of these foreign portfolio investors, those that are already even in the markets and those who are thinking of coming mm -hmm. to the markets is okay, they're beginning to see more transparency. So things are becoming more open. So that that, that, that is very, very key would, for them. Would you say that there's regular engagement with those with those category of people? Because, I mean obviously one of the reasons why we're doing that is for them to you know, have yes. a better view of the market. So would yes. you say that, I mean, the positive feedback is continuously positive? It is, it is, it is, absolutely. Especially um, coming from maybe a couple of years ago, you know, when we had the major sort of FX issue. The, in, the, the feedback from there wasn't great. But I think ultimately what we saw was there's still some sort of hope in Nigeria as a markets, you know, that there's a lot of development that can happen here. There's a lot of opportunity in, in Nigeria. And because there is that um, willingness by, you know, the regulators, the government, the stakeholders to move Nigeria forward. So there's, there's still, okay, we're looking, we're watching and we're seeing and we're seeing improvement. And we're able to achieve that, obviously, with partnerships like this, who, as Kandi said, would take Nigeria to the world and bring the world to Nigeria. Do you as think well. it also make things a lot better when they hear, when investors hear that you're partnering with the likes of Reuters? Absolutely. And providing the Absolutely. trading platform infrastructure Absolutely. and all of that. You, I mean, you spoke about Reuters being over 100 years mm -hmm. old, you know, so they have obviously built a track record. So if you're in partnership with those who have built track record, at least that gives those looking at you a little more confidence to say, okay, Absolutely. if, you know, you're able to get into partnership with these types of institutions, then there's obviously some sort of faith that those institutions have in you. You know, they've probably done their due diligence as well. And I think it's, it's just serving to, to help sort of build that collective brand. But not, again, not just globally, because even Nigeria as a market, you know, I think it also supports Thomson Reuters in the Nigerian market. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, there are elders, you know, in terms of how <laughs> like long, <laughs> how long, yeah, use the word elders, how long they have been in m m global markets mm -hmm. generally. But there's still a lot in Nigeria that, you know, we still need to sort of bring out and, and fish out. So that collaboration, you know, between the Nigerian sort of base entity as well as the global international. I think okay, Candice, say. what would be the, I mean, the ideal <clears throat> big picture, as it, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the ideal big picture, you see, you look at a country like Nigeria and still largely untapped, I mean, still a lot of room for improvement and that potential to be tapped. We kind of experience that Thompson Reuters has and you haven't worked us in other markets. What, what, what else would you like to see in terms of how we harness all of, I mean, the remaining potential as it were? So I'd like to touch on um, some elements that Jimmy just talked about, mm -hmm. which is specifically around the data piece and dissemination of data. It's, again, something that's incredibly close to what I do and what I spend a lot of time on. And for me, the narrative in Africa is... There is so much data available across global markets. We, we are really running at a pace of change now from a data perspective, where I think we've actually got data coming at us at such a pace that this rate of change that we're experiencing right now is the slowest it's ever gonna be. Oh, wow. And I think it's what we do with that information that will harness a lot of the potential and the opportunities in, in the, the 47 countries that we represent from a Thomson Reuters Africa perspective. So it's looking at things like um, investors looking to invest in Nigeria. 
knowing from an external perspective, in a, in a global market perspective, if they're speaking with international stakeholders, your large global banks, those global banks that are representatives on behalf of their markets mm -hmm. into Nigeria, it's the dissemination of FMDQ data, things like NAFEX, which is the FX benchmark mm -hmm. data. That's a critical piece of information that market participants, both from a corporate perspective all the way through to managing funds and portfolios, really critically need to know where the market is, where people can trade at. And understanding that that information is now transparently available and something that we have spent quite a lot of time working on carrying and making sure that it's available in those large global banks in terms of the systems that they procure. So banks don't typically just rely on a front-end system, you know, looking mm -hmm. at an iPad. Of course, that's one, one version of being able to access that information. But actually, that plethora of data that I was talking about is feeding back-end systems. It's feeding quant systems. It's feeding economic information into the eyes of researchers within these organizations who are actually making a number of those decisions. So for me, it's how you bring that all together. And I think that that's something that we help support the likes of FMDQ in terms of that data dissemination into the right places. You know, to me, sometimes it's always good to make, I mean, look at, yes, you, we know where we're coming from, where we are right now. Some Sometimes it's always good to put ourselves side by side with perhaps similar markets in terms of how they're also getting along and how they're using some of those perhaps similar initiatives that we're using and looking at the kind of impact it's having on our markets versus their markets. So when you think about other, I was going to ask, perhaps I'll ask you that question too. When you think about some of some other markets and some other financial markets similar to ours, do you feel that okay, Nigeria? Yes, we, compared to those other markets, we've we've done very well. Or would you look at some other markets and say, you know what? I'd like us to be like country X and perhaps if we do more of what they're doing, you know, that could give us some more, make us a little bigger, more efficient or something. So I, I would say both. I'll okay. say yes to both. Um, so there are some markets that we have looked at, especially even within the African space that um, indeed we've had some exchanges, you know, come to FMDQ to say, show us how you're doing what it is you're doing. We have some, some areas where at least a particular example where they want to build or sorry, yeah, build a, an FMDQ like oh, sort of okay. exchange even in, in the country. So yes, on, on one part, yes, the things that we've done and yes. But again, for us as an institution, we're obviously aspiring to do better and be better. So there are also areas we're looking at and saying, okay, how do we, you know, mirror as much well not, not so much mirror, because again, for every area you have your own intricacies. So we go to learn, we have module markets that we look at, we have uh, module institutions that we say, okay, let us see how we can learn from you as well, so that we can bring what we have learned to our markets to help develop it using the intricacies of our markets. So and it might not even necessarily be only institutions that are like FMDQ but but markets. And that's where we also, you know, rely on the collaboration we have with institutions like Thomson Reuters, who would take us to those places as well. You know, they have been in those markets, they know how things operate. You know, they may be able to show us some inroads, mm -hmm. you know, who are the best sort of people to look at, best institutions, you know, and how basically go about understanding what it is they do and how we can apply that in Candice, your, your, your perspective in terms of how Nigeria, if we do harness that full potential, how we can become a global player, I mean, in terms of our financial markets. So, again, absolutely engagement with other markets oh. and understanding from a continental perspective that when people are investing into Africa, they're not normally just looking at one market. They're looking at relativity, they're looking at risk, and they're looking at credit. Mm -hmm. They're looking at currency exposure and risks associated to some of the, the, those elements of their investment decision. Um, for me, it's engaging with stakeholders, um, understanding, I have a personal barometer which I use, which is often when people are investing in some of these countries, do they actually come to the country themselves to actually feel it and live it? I personally enjoy mm. coming to, to Lagos because I love the people, I love the energy and I love everything that's happening around me. It sort of touches every single one of my senses. And, and what I enjoy about that is I go back and I talk about Lagos that way. People can see it and feel it through my personal experience. And I think that's what I'm, I'm experiencing. A lot more people are finding themselves spending time in these countries, spending time with organizations like FMDQ, like ourselves, and asking us a lot of questions, asking us how we find it, doing business as Thomson Reuters in a number of countries. Do we get paid? 
you know, simple <laughs> questions okay. like that actually help a corporate make some decisions about how they handle certain constraints and various things. So it's, it's we live what we what we do. And I, I think that's what I love about mm. representing the, the markets that we do. Absolutely great stuff. Well, we're going to have to leave you there. Thank you so much, ladies, for talking to us today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much Thank for you. joining Thank us. You, I've been speaking to Candice Dart, Head of Market Development for Africa, Thompson Reuters, and to Ms. Shekoni, Associate Executive Director for Capital Markets at the FMDQ O2C Securities Exchange.